Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at solar power plant. So let's dive right into it. So in today's specific episode, we're going to take a closer look at solar photovoltaic, basically solar cell as a large power plant. So there are three core components of the system. Component number one, solar cell. Component number two, inverters. Component number three, step up transformer. Now you have to, many of you know, solar cells are DC as in direct current, as in like a battery. Now your grid does not run on that. Your grid runs on AC current. So it goes to an inverter. Now inverter can do many things. Sometimes they can do step up, sometimes they can do step down. If let's say volt, uh, voltage that is coming off of your grid can be as high as 1500 volts. So it might do a step down. There are many things depending on each installation. So this generally still produces a very low voltage output. There are inverter that can produce grid level like as in 10 kilo volt, like very, very high voltage uh, AC, but we generally don't do that because cost of that is way too high. And then we send it to a transformer and then transformer put it up to as high as we need it as in like you know 10 kilo volt 35 kilo volt as high as we need 150 kilo volt sometimes so these are the three core components of the solar system now first thing you have to understand solar cell as in that's the core element of it there are three components in it which you have to balance out now first element is cost per watt as in like how much money you have to spend for getting one watt of power it used to be very high like to give you an idea earlier it used to be 70 to 80 dollars per watt as in like if you want to buy a solar panel that can give you one watt you might be spending as high as 100 or dollars now this is a simple graph this is a very short time i'm not showing you from 1980s to now i'm showing you from 2009 we used to be at around one dollar point two nine basically $1.29 now at 2000 like 15 roughly we are at 0.42 cents now it has gone down even more but we are reaching a point where it won't go down to like very 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 low it will go down but it won't be like you know exponential at it used to be and if you see different different colors these are different different types of solar cells overall and then you have to understand efficiency now solar installations uh, majority of the cost comes from the land so for that reason we want to make sure it is efficient like efficiency simply means let's say you have one meter square how much watt you will get out of it as in like one meter square in a good solar cell you can get let's say roughly 100 watts let's just say now let's say that's working at 40 percent efficiency you buy something that is cheaper per watt but it's as 20 percent efficient you have to put you know twice the area so for that reason we also have to pay close attention to efficiency and then we come to the very crucial part which is kind of neglected for small scale but it is very crucial for large scale industrial level applications it's a lifespan now earlier solar cells will lose upwards of one to five percent capacity per year so as you can see they will not last very long but nowadays you can buy solar cells from reputed manufacturers and they will give you a very long warranty as in they will give you warranty on capacity for 25 years they will guarantee that you will have upwards of 80 percent of the output so let's say you bought a 100 watt solar cell from date of purchase to you know 25 years from now it will still be a 80 watt solar panel so this is very crucial this is uh, make sure how long your solar cell can remain there as in like how quickly you have to replace it you don't want that to be very high now earlier it used to be very high like you could have like uh, there are some scenario where they will only give you 10 year warranty but for a grid scale for like if you are investing cro uh, crores and crores or millions of dollars or sometimes billions of dollars you want to make sure that is a you know investment that's going to last for that reason we really pay attention to lifespan and fourth point i have mentioned here is balance like you have to judge this based on per case as in like let's say you are in a place where uh, sunlight is not very prominent low efficiency solar cells sometimes work very better in like you know cloudy environment and where you are going there is cloudy environment so you might prefer you know low efficiency solar cells or you might be in a place where you know land is so expensive that you have to make sure it is very efficient other things also pay attention like let's say you are building a small scale grid and you know for a fact that as of now you can easily build a you know low lifespan cells that cost you very little but you can replace it like you know in 10 years time and you know you will 
get your money back in roughly let's say three four years of early investment so that way you can decide so thing is we want best of everything but there is a balance there is a has to be a balance to the universe then we come to the inverter and transformer part now inverter has to be pure sine wave like you can't have this going into grid you have to have pure sine wave now pure sine wave inverter used to be very expensive very uh, costly technology but the price has come down considerably and the reason we put that to step up transformer is that the pure sine wave that comes out is still a bit jagged it's not completely 100% smooth so sending it through a very big transformer like this uh, smooths it out to almost uh, perfect level it's almost makes it perfect and this is much more designed to handle like a 24 into 7 into 5 to 25 years of operation they are generally a warranty for that long and uh, some have been going on for 75 years yes that old so these are the two components that you don't have to worry like this is mass production components we don't have to worry about too much however now let's you know pass the component of the cost now cost is solely dependent on the fact what we call grid parity as in let's say a coal power plant produces electricity sells it to the grid grid as in national grid now the grid takes energy from all the providers like let's say somebody is using a dam somebody is using a coal power plant there is a tariff that i have to pay like i have to buy that electricity i'll be like okay i'll pay you let's say one, uh, one cent per kilowatt for grid level it's very cheap so one cent per kilowatt can your solar cell provide that much so that's the grid parity now the reason where people are using cold fire power plant coal is a depleting resource now you might not worry about let's say climate change but coal is gonna run out like let's say um, you have done a mine and you are you know extracting coal sooner or later that mine is gonna run out so and we have been noticing especially those who are using gas as in like uh, petroleum based power plants they, their cost of power as in like dollar per kilowatt has been going up steadily solar on the other hand is going down because of the advancement in the technology advancement in inverters advantage advancements in maximum power point tracking so their prices however they haven't crossed yet they haven't reached a point where solar is cheaper not yet almost there almost there but haven't crossed it so we might think in another five to ten years it might cross it however to compensate for that because government knows that if we waited till the parity happens it's going to be very expensive to build a system because we are going to be uh, energy negative at that time so government try to you know uh, give incentive for many private business ownerships to build their own solar systems for that reason they provided what's called tax credit so either they're gonna buy it at a much higher cost or they will be like you know uh, we're gonna not tax the whole power plant too much so government you know taking steps to make sure this becomes a you know profitable endeavor nobody's gonna invest hundreds and hundreds and thousands of crores or millions of dollars if there is no profit into it like it has to be profit it cannot be a money sink so that's why government is investing a lot china's government uh, also allows very cheap land acquisition that's why their cost is around roughly one uh, one dollar where usa cost is roughly three dollars simply because of land acquisition and other things are very expensive and labor is also expensive in usa so for all that reason we have to understand that it as of now as i'm making this video in 2018 cost parity hasn't happened everywhere like we are almost there almost there where the cost of coal petroleum or even hydropower plant because those dams are expensive they are going up and you know lack of monsoon is also making sure the rivers are not producing as much power as we are used to so the cost of there is going up but solar cost is going down now it haven't crossed yet like we haven't crossed it yet once we cross it then everybody will use solar as primary means of generation however all those cost is meaningless because the land cost is idiotically high for solar power you need roughly roughly one hectare for one megawatt now one hectare is roughly 100 meters 100 meters so suffice to say it depends where you're buying the land like let's say uh, india recently have invested a lot of money in you know solar systems and uh, we put it in desert nobody was buying that desert land it has no practical purpose no agricultural purpose so we just started using it and now we are getting 600 megawatts of power out of it so for all things in personal all things considered we have to be mindful of this the land cost is very expensive tax credit now uh, many companies uh, countries sorry many countries are removing tax credits because they, they no longer need it and uh, they have reached 
you know great parity however still some countries like usa and india still has to go some way before we reach price parity basically so what we can expect in the future now you have to understand it is the best energy resource that we have that is renewable now why i'm saying this not wind wind is that simply if you want hundreds and hundreds of megawatt of wind the turbine the blade that you get that uh, wind tower it's idiotically expensive the capital cost is ludicrously high and they do not make sense everywhere like almost everywhere where human is solar panels will work they might not they might not work to 100% efficiency but they will work they will give you power they will they, you might have to make three times la larger area or two times larger area but you will get power out of it and sun will shine every day and if you are let's say in case of india rajasthan is almost a desert area so that whole land can be converted into solar cells solar uh, pardon me solar farms and will get enough power to run entire india for the day so and we can run coal power plants at night to handle out the load or we can use hydropower plants where india gets most of its power from so all those things consider as of now as we speak to you this is the best power uh, you know renewable resource we have india already has the biggest power plant however do, i don't think this will gonna last for very long because there are other plants that china is working on that will be around 2000 megawatts links in the description below and the future of it i am seeing mixed use basically where they're gonna use the solar but they're also gonna use the land now this is my personal favorite india's first one megawatt canal top solar panels basically land cost is very high but canals are already government owned so government was like okay we already own the land it has water running on it water evaporates since we are sending that water to deserts we want to make sure the water does not evaporate how about we cover that place up with solar panels land acquisition cost was down now because water is running on the bottom the temperature of the cells would be relatively less like not like you know if you put cell on raw ground it's gonna be like you know 30 degrees celsius you're gonna get uh, 10 degrees celsius on water no but you're gonna get some serious uh, energy savings because your water is cooling the solar panel now if it cools it down to let's say 25 degrees celsius from 30 to 25 degrees celsius you're gonna get more efficiency your cells will work longer and they will provide more power and land acquisition is already you know taken care of so this not only saves water because it uh, blocks uh, water evaporation it also provides electricity so it's multi-use basically dual profit there are other systems where people who are agriculturally active they want they don't want to you know let go of their land but they are growing crops that are shade resistant basically they do not need direct sunlight not every plant can be grown like this but some thrive in this sort of environment as you can see in this picture so they what they did is uh, put a long post and uh, on top of the post they will put the solar panels and below they will do the gardening or uh, whatever they need to do they can do hydrophonics they can do a little bit of farming that however the capital cost of both of these is quite high so that's why you don't see them as of now capital cost is a bit high so once we cross that price parity these will start showing up more and more they will make more sense at that point so this was my episode on solar power i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't don't worry about it dislike it and leave a comment what we're gonna see in the next episode of science thursday and please subscribe press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching